Thanks for clicking on this video. Before we get to the trash of last year, I wanted to take a moment for something good, and that's this video's sponsor, Keeps. Keeps is a subscription service that helps your hair today so that you have hair tomorrow. They have clinically proven treatments for symptoms of hair loss delivered right to your front door and at half the cost of other pharmacy prices. It is a known fact that two out of every three men will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. The best way to keep your hair is to maintain what you have now. Prevention is key. I think the biggest question anyone has with Keeps is, what even is it? What do I even do to help make sure I keep my hair? I had the same question, so I'll show you. This is a bottle of minoxidil. This is a part of my treatment plan. I don't wanna lose my hair. All you do is take that with the eyedropper, fill it up, and you go whoop. That's it. You do that twice a day. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash projared or use the link in the description down below. Most men have begun seeing results within six months of beginning treatment. So the sooner you start, the better. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash projared for 50% off your first order. Thanks again to Keeps for being a sponsor. And now on to the video. 2021 sucked. It was just 2020, the squeak hole. These are the top 10 worst games of 2021. What's up with Nintendo making their sports games so underwhelming? Mario Golf Super Rush was announced last February and then was released only four months later. I should have suspected right then and there that something was up, because if Nintendo had something worth showing off, they would have done so way earlier. The main feature was the new multiplayer speed golf mode, where everyone runs as fast as they can to get their ball into the hole the fastest, all at the same time. A great concept that immediately shows how shallow it is after playing it like twice. It just didn't retain anyone's attention or excitement. It was barely a blip on the Switch's release year, and the free updates to add more courses were too little too late. Compare this to how great Mario Golf was back on the Game Boy Advance or even the GameCube, and it's clear that the Mario Sports titles have become lazier and lazier so that Nintendo can fill a gap in their calendar. Kind of like when a YouTuber doesn't know what new video to make so they put out some kind of top 10. Dumbass, broken, unpolished, unplayable, unfinished piece of shit game. Am I describing Battlefield 2042? Or am I describing every DICE release ever? No one, and I mean no one, is allowed to be shocked that Battlefield 2042 came out in such an atrocious state. There are more glitches and bugs than I could ever possibly describe. And if I start listing them off, I won't finish until they put out Battlefield 1492 or whatever. Vehicles can go wherever they damn please. Hitboxes don't make any sense. Blood comes off enemies when bullets hit empty air. And other times, if you unload on someone, you can hit nothing at all. Look, the glitches can be hilarious, and I am not denying that. And these are funnier than anything I could ever say about the game. But you can't deny that this is an embarrassing mess. And the worst part is, we all knew better. We all knew it would release like this. I even warned eight years ago with Battlefield 4, DICE games will always, always, always launch horrendously buggy and near unplayable. And yet, everyone is appalled when Battlefield 2042 follows suit. Fool me once, shame on you, DICE. Fool me 2042 times, shame on all of us. <laughs> I have a soft spot for farm simulators, and everyone's original favorite is Harvest Moon. And that's why so many tears were shed into piles of hay and untilled land in Harvest Moon One Life. No! I can already hear some of you crying. Take this back! I love the Harvest Moon series! Well, don't worry. Harvest Moon One Life isn't Harvest Moon. The original developer was released from publisher Natsume, but Natsume kept the Harvest Moon name so they could crap out shit-ass sequels. It's why fans of the series followed the original developer and played their same but different series, Story of Seasons. And boy were they right too. Harvest Moon One Life plays like it was developed in 2001, but still wanted to chase after the Minecraft crowd. It is bafflingly an open world game with nothing in it, as it's all downright ugly to look at. Controls and farming are frustratingly stiff that makes it unfun to play. 
All the townsfolk you're supposed to befriend have the personality of a Roomba with a name tag on it and are all basically a means to an end. Zero effort was put into this. Nothing was done to innovate, improve, or reimagine from the last entry. This is a new game that hopes to succeed based on name alone, pretending that far superior competition doesn't exist. And that's the saddest realization we all have to accept now. Harvest Moon, as we knew it, has been dead for some time. Speaking of things shambling forth, decaying and limping every step of the way to their inevitable demise, hi Konami! Some of you may be wondering what the heck this soccer game is. Crazy thing is, you've definitely heard of it before, because it's been going for decades. eFootball 2022 is the newest edition of Pro Evolution Soccer, the long-running soccer or football game that millions favor over longtime competitor FIFA Sports. But this time around, it's free to play, which I'm guessing to Konami, free to play should also mean free to develop. You can tell no budget went into this. The menus alone are boring and lack any kind of life to them. Warning signs show themselves before you even start a match. And when you start one, oh boy, these are not human beings. These are simulacrums instructed how to show emotion by sentient sock puppets. Why are their lips like this? Unsurprisingly, it plays like ass too. It does that thing where the game will automatically switch what player you are controlling the moment they get the ball. And every single time that happens, that player halts dead in their tracks regardless if you are holding a direction. That's every single pass and steal. It feels like playing an engine that keeps sputtering every few seconds to stop for a second, let out a loud pop and sputter again as black smoke chokes out every living thing in its vicinity. If that isn't an appropriate enough metaphor for eFootball 2022, then this is. In its match against FIFA Soccer, eFootball 2022's goalie picked up the ball, turned around, headbutted it into his own net, and then did a celebration slide on his knees in front of a crowd of thousands of PlayStation 1 NPCs. <laughs> Remember that period of like a month when every streamer ever was playing New World and how quickly that vanished? New World was a quickly popular MMO for reasons that are beyond me. Honestly, I didn't see it doing anything that wasn't already accomplished by Guild Wars 2. And yet it was all over Twitch. Why? Because it was published by Amazon. This meant everyone on Twitch had the option of accepting a Twitch bounty to play the game, in which they are paid some dollars if they stream New World for so many hours. Naturally, Amazon put up a lot of money to get their game in front of the eyes of as many people as possible. They weren't concerned with making a good, solid MMORPG, they just wanted it to make money. This has resulted in New World collapsing in on itself. The economy is completely ruined. Quests don't even pay enough gold to cover repairing your equipment. Once you hit maximum level, there is nothing for you to do outside of just killing more monsters for the sake of killing them. So many exploits were found, such as infinite gold or mass reporting rival players in PvP to get them banned that Amazon basically does not know how to fix it. They can't. If they do a progress restart, everyone will get pissed and quit altogether. So now they're stuck with this problem that no one knows how to solve. That's not to mention the typical server issues you would expect from launch, but also that it had such horrendous graphical glitches, such as letting the menu screen's frames per second go infinite, that it literally caused users' graphics cards to fry and burst into flame. This is Amazon's third major attempt at entering the games market. And if you don't call the previous two, that's because they also failed. With New World looking how it does right now, Amazon's gonna go for the hat trick. Another game trying to succeed based on name recognition. Dark Alliance is a sort of sequel to the two Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance games from the PS2 era. They're Dungeons and Dragons games, so it's easy to expect all kinds of high fantasy, swords, monsters, and magic. And that's where you'd be wrong, because Dark Alliance has zero magic in the game. Every single playable character is all melee, with one bow in there, for good measure. It isn't a fun co-op dungeon crawler like many were expected. Instead, it's a soulless third-person brawler loot fest, akin to something like Destiny or Marvel's Avengers, only worse and less fun than those. Several abilities don't work or just plain suck, 
enemy AI is laughable at best, and the gameplay loop of kill stuff, get stuff is less satisfying than lighting off one of those snake things at 4th of July. And they're both turds. There are numerous YouTube videos showcasing how awful Dark Alliance is far better than I ever could. The game was free on Game Pass, and not worth the hard drive space in the hopes of seeing some hilarious glitches. Watch those videos instead, and save yourself a lot of time. Activision Blizzard, as in the whole company. Oh boy, there is too much to cover here. Long story short, lawsuits and allegations plagued the company throughout the entirety of 2021 about workplace discrimination, sexual misconduct, and general misogyny, only for the company to respond by saying it's not true. Then the lawsuit moves forward and evidence is brought forth that it was all true. This resulted in numerous big studio heads abruptly resigning, causing several things that they had their hands on to be altered. Did you know that Overwatch's McCree is no longer named McCree? That's why! Employees then staged a massive protest by walking out in the thousands. They did this not once, but twice throughout the year, followed by a third walkout by contracted studio Ravensoft, who were doing quality assurance testing. A new co-head of Blizzard left her position only three months after getting the job, citing marginalization, intimidation, and pay discrepancies to her male co-workers. As of now, the whole lawsuit is still going, so it's very possible that we could just see Activision Blizzard on this very same list next year. Dude, I don't even like Grand Theft Auto that much, and even I got mad about this one. For years, fans have been working on mods to bring the trilogy of Grand Theft Auto 3 Vice City, and San Andreas to modern machines. They were doing incredible work, too. Imagine their frustration and backlash when Rockstar Games began shutting those mods down with cease and desist orders, because it was clear they were going to release their own remasters. This. This is what they called Remastered. It was handled by a studio specializing in mobile games, not that I think there's anything wrong with that, but it's clear where they use algorithms and AI to automatically upscale or remaster parts of each game. Parts of the world were missing or had bizarre collision, character models were made cartoonishly goofy, clashing with the serious tone of the world they were in, and just straight up typos everywhere. Attempts at updated game mechanics like aiming and shooting ended up working worse than they did originally. The whole release was so awful that Rockstar had to pull the game off its own store so they could fix it, and relisted the original trilogy, but it was too late. Everyone was already asking for refunds. Keep in mind, this is titled the Definitive Edition. This is Rockstar saying, when you think of GTA San Andreas, this is what should come to mind. No wonder they've been forcing us to play Grand Theft Auto V for the past eight years. They forgot how to make good new ones. This game has everything. A new platformer while the genre's hot, it's made by the dude who created Sonic the Hedgehog, it's being published by Square Enix, and has a name that everyone unknowingly mispronounces. Seriously, it's Balan Wonder World, not Balan Wonderland, which flows off the tongue so much better, but that's the smallest of the problems this game has. Balan Wonderland, oh, damn it, did it again. Balan Wonder World is heavily inspired by, and by that I mean ripped off, Super Mario Odyssey, where you can transform into numerous enemies to have special new abilities. These transformations only have a single use or ability, making you constantly switch out or change and make it all repetitive. Some of these transformations can't even jump in their platformer game. The controls are stiff and barely respond, and several buttons on the controller all do the exact same thing. It's too simple for its own good. Few games are ever what I consider irredeemable, and Balan Wonderworld is one of them. It was so bad that the Sonic guy, Yuji Naka, left Square Enix immediately after its release after the years of fans hyping it up. Did I mention there are musical sequences? Because there are. You don't play them. They're just there to make sure that you have plenty of time to contemplate what you're doing with your time. Many of you already know this, but I'm a big fan of Magic the Gathering. I stream it every Monday on Twitch, 
I've done multiple playthroughs of the 1997 PC game, and I've talked about that same game here on this channel. A lot of things went really, really bad for Magic in 2021. There are now a constant influx of new cards being released. Instead of just the usual four to five standard sets, there's also Modern Horizons 2, Time Spiral Remastered, Commander decks, and way too many special art secret layer drops in limited quantities that can cost well over $100 for only a half dozen cards. They are oversaturating their own market and exhausting its own player base. Add to that, the Magic World Championship had its prize pool of $1 million reduced down to 250,000. And then Wizards of the Coast went on to report record-breaking profits. And then the professional league players got absolutely gutted when it was announced that the Magic Pro League would no longer exist as of 2022 leaving organized play in a nebulous unknown state. And then a new format was announced on Magic Arena, Alchemy, in which wizards can take any cards they like and change them however they want, which retroactively affected the historic format and made several cards suddenly worthless. All this without offering any kind of wild card crafting rebate to make it up to those affected. But the worst thing that happened to Magic the Gathering was this, Magic Legends. An all-new MMORPG set in the Magic Universe sounded so cool. Making decks and going through dungeons with friends in a cool co-op setting. It could have been like that 1997 game, but modern and multiplayer. What Magic Legends ended up being is a Diablo clone that bore little resemblance to Magic the Gathering. You weren't really casting and playing cards. You had a deck that essentially meant constantly cycling abilities with little control over what was up next. Worse, many of these abilities weren't even real magic cards, making it feel even less like a magic MMO. It looked like shit, played like shit, and ran like shit. What's even happening on the screen here? I see things and numbers popping off, but I am retaining zero information of what is being fed to me. Magic Legends was also very deliberately a means of maximizing money out of mobile players. It had systems such as, oh, you ran a dungeon? You're tired and out of energy now. You'll need to wait four real hours to do another one. Unless you want to pay $1.99 right now. Imagine nickel and dime tactics like that everywhere. Only it wasn't just for the mobile version. It was also right in front of you on your PC. Even though numerous features were not available right away, you bet your ass the full microtransaction store was ready to go on day one. Sorry, not enough? Then don't worry, because it also absolutely launched with a battle pass. Pay a bunch of money for additional cosmetics, rewards, and items. Here's the Black Lotus on top of it all. Magic Legends official open beta released back in March of 2021. Only three months later, it was announced that Magic Legends would cease development and the game officially shut down in October. It didn't even last a single quarter to see if people would be interested. I was excited for a Magic MMO. I had never had my enthusiasm so quickly drained away from any singular game within minutes of playing like I did with Magic Legends. There hasn't been anything this bad for Magic since Homelands. I'd rather articulately explain banding than ever play this again. A lot of bad games came out, but nothing will be worse than the embarrassing state of one of my favorite hobbies in all of 2021.